This novel was set in a town called Parkman, closely based on Robinson, also Marshall. Many events were happening in Marshall. And he was, unlike the people seem to think, he wasn't trying to ridicule Robinson or Marshall or small town living or anything else. He was trying to write about people who lived in towns that size and the difference between them and other people. He wanted to write of social relationships and financial relationships, working class virtues, the pleasures taken immediately and for their own sake, and the casual attitude towards sex. At first, he found working people to be much more honest, and they were open and more dependable. But then he found himself having doubts about them. Another quote I love, he told Mitchell, I want to love people but they're all such damn fools, including myself. I think I know what he meant. His ambition was to portray life as it was and to tell the truth about romantic love. He completed the book in December of 1956, and by the time it was published in January of 58, he had met and married Gloria and was no longer living in Marshall. He was able to miss the attitudes expressed and the chagrin people felt when they found themselves included in the book, or many times when they didn't, it was much the same reaction at the time. This was quite possibly the first time anyone had tried to show the real feelings and beliefs of an unrecorded segment of the American public. Although critics hated the book because he attempted a few things with spelling and other things, and it was extremely long. He said it was one of the best books he had ever written. When the movie rights were sold, it, they were sold for almost as much money as he got for eternity. And the movie certainly has had the same, better, uh, better reception possibly even than eternity. That's because more people like to see movies about sex than they do about war, I think. <laughs> He was uh, very careful to not hide too completely the people he was writing about. Um, a lot of us had had conversations about how they could be handled, how things could be said, so we could fill in the blanks sometimes if it was needed. But certainly the book was the topic of conversation in Robinson for months, uh, maybe even years, and it was it, it really created a big stir in Robinson. It, people today don't feel as badly toward Jim as they did at that time because most of the people he wrote about are dead. There's a few of us still living, but we never admitted we were in it anyway. <laughs> there was little doubt of Loney's influence and input because a lot of the people that were treated badly were people we knew she didn't like anyhow. Uh, there was some prestige involved if you could find yourself in one of the good characters. Of course, there were not as many good characters as there were people who thought they were included in it. But that didn't matter either. There were two elderly women in Robinson. I say that now as an elderly woman. I think they were even older than I was at the time. Elderly women have a special interest for me. But there were two in Robinson at that time who knew who everybody was in that book. And they shared it with you at the drop of a hat. Um, and they were wrong as often as they were right. But they had a nice run and they enjoyed the prestige. And so they just left it the way it was and that was all. You still can drive around Robinson and see the places he wrote about. People who have lived in Robinson all their life can tell you where the place was torn down, but that's what it used to be. This was the Woodworth Hotel. It's torn down now, but it used to be the Woodworth Hotel, and you can get that all over Robinson. Certain amount of prestige in that also. Prestige is hard to get in a small town. You take what you got, and a lot of times that's what you got. Um, it was an exciting time. And many of our members of the community were pretty happy with it. Most of the characters in running were composite characters. They were two or three people rolled into one character. And it was uh, kind of neat. Uh, I didn't really find myself in the book, but I hadn't lived in Robinson very long. And 
probably had not been there long enough to create a persona that he wanted to cover. Um, I, I did find two or three events that I might have been included in, but you would have had to have been an awfully good friend of mine to know about it, and I don't remember ever confiding it to Jim. It's not as bad now as it once was. Most of the people, as I say, who didn't like Jim and resented this are dead. In fact, they all meet. They just all might be. I'll have to read it again and find out. If any of you have any questions and you think I might know the answer to, I'd be happy to. I tell everything I know I have no sense. And I would just be delighted to share any, any information I might have with you. Thank God I won't be sued. Oh, I may be. Yes? Do I want to talk about what? Well, the character of, of Bama in Some Came Running, we had a gambler in Robinson whose name was Arky. And so the gambler whose name was Bama was based upon Arky, and it definitely was. Arky, would, he never took his big fancy hat off. He uh, was uh, a very interesting person. I knew him very well. But the character of Bama was also my husband. And as I have read the story again and have watched the movie, I know now for sure that what I long suspected was true. And the character of Bama was as much Tinker as it was Arky. When Bama had class, he was Tinker. When Bama was Bama, he was Arky. <laughs> Thank you.